Today's tarantula is mini, but mighty. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now I say in quite a lot of these videos, but the realm fab is coming along nicely, so soon I won't have to film on my bed. But today's video, we are talking about the heterothili or heterothele, or however you'd like to say it, Villa Sella spider. Now, this one's a miniature little dwarf species that packs a hell of a punch. Love it, love it, love it. Um, in fact, it's not my favorite, but one of my favorites, maybe in my top 10 of the whole collection um, to keep. Now, you see this tub here? That's all it's living in. And I would say it's probably semi or sub adult. Yeah, doesn't need a lot of space. It's a, an incy wincy species. Um, I don't think it's quite sub adult yet actually, maybe another moult, and it's got a new home arriving soon. You may hear that a couple of times because these videos were supposed to be recorded after I received a package full of enclosures for the round verb. Unfortunately, uh, not the seller's fault, but the courier's fault, there's been issues and I needed to get these videos recorded in the same time scale I planned things, you know what I mean? So I'm a little bit like all over the place. I think um, mine, personally, from the what it was kept in before this, when it was dinky, it it webbed a lot. It was a prof, prof, prof. It's a heavy webber. Can't get that blimmin' word out right now. Blah. Heavy webber. Um, it likes to use anchor points, but it was only ever coming on the top when it wanted to feed. It was only ever climbing to a certain height. Most of the time it spent in silken tunnels and when it was super dinky, it lived more like a kind of fossorial type tarantula. So yes, some places class them as arboreal, but me, I would say they were semi, uh, semi-terrestrial. Now the new enclosure that this one will be going into is about two and a half times the height that this one is. So we'll be able to see now that it's a much older tarantula, whether it really uses any space. So backstory of this one, it was definitely a mystery box sling. Can't remember where from. Again, you're gonna hear this quite a lot, but I didn't specifically buy this spider. Um, and now I've got it, I want more. And I don't say that about a lot of my tarantulas, but with the H Villa seller, I want more. Um, and I will get more at some point. So yes, it was a dinky, dinky, super little weedle sling um, I got from Mystery Box and it's been growing with me ever since. Um, okay, so appearance is the first thing we get onto on here. So this is a kind of two-tone tarantula, black and gold in my opinion. That's what I would class it as anyway. It's kind of like a beigey gold um, and, and kind of like darker, darker goldy brown to black. It's a combination of shades of two colours, basically. But the way they contrast each other, I think, is stunning. I like the almost black strips along the carapace, the darker bum and legs. But it still has that kind of gold burst coming through. And I just really, really like that. I think it's a very attractive spider. Now, gold is not normally a colour for me. Like, when it comes to jewellery and things, I've always been a silver person or a white gold person. Never been a gold lover. Um, but in animals, in tarantulas, I really think it's a, a, a lovely trait to have. Um, I'm mixing up my words today. Sorry about this, guys. And I think I'm going to put this tarantula at... Wow. I love it. I think it's attractive as hell. We're going to give this one an 8. That's 9 again. I can't... There, eight. We're gonna give it an eight out of 10. I think it's a beautiful, small, but attractive spider. I think the patterning of the black and gold is what does it for me. So visibility again, we always discuss this with heavy webbers. Is that a problem or not? Well, with this one, although it does build its tunnel system with the web and it also kind of lays sheets of webbing uh, all over the deck or you have in there, it also does kind of come out around the sides. I noticed that a lot. So right now it's, well, actually now it's run onto the top. Probably thinks it's food time. But a lot of the time I see it running around the sides here. So 
I'm going to put it on a 7 out of 10 because for a heavy Weber I see this one quite a lot. Um, again, like I said, it's mostly the sides, but right now she's on the top. It'll be interesting to see when I got my new enclosures and she's rehoused how she takes to that one. I'll update you guys on that. Um, I just think that they're really, really cool. Really, really cool little tees. So yeah, 8 out of 10 because I see her most of the time. And if I don't, here's the weird thing about these. Actually, no, no. We'll save that for behavioural characteristics. Okay, I explain more about the eight in behavioral characteristics. So next we're going to feeding response. She's got a good feeding response, this tarantula. We're going for a nine out of 10, ladies and gentlemen. Nine out of 10, okay? Uh, she senses something on the web. Sometimes she'll come straight for it. Other times she'll sit and wait for a while and then she'll just spring out of action and she takes it down. Um, I tried mass feeding her once as you'll see in the footage with a bunch of mealworms I was trying to see if she'd be like a sporadic eater like chomp at one then another she didn't she only took to one and I ended up having to take um, I think I left one of those other mealworms in there and took the rest out and that other one did get eaten after but she didn't try and take two lots into her mouth at once um, like some species do but she still was very keen on coming out, very curious about her food. And I think the response is, is kind of ferocious and elegant at the same time. Can you mix the two? Well, I just did, right? So yes, you can. I think it's she's got a great little feeding response. Um, so yeah, if you like a spider that likes to snatch its prey and eat it out in the open half the time, that's a spider for you. I say that because half the time she'll sit on the top and eat, the other half of the time she'll take it into her network of web tunnels to eat. So now we're moving on to cost. Um, again, I'm gonna hit these at a nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. She's a really high scoring tarantula. This might even be the biggest scoring tarantula we've had here so far. I think it is, you know. I think this is one of our top scorers, guys. Uh, nine out of 10 because cheap as chips. Uh, again, I've got her in a mystery box, but I've seen slings at most a fiver, five pounds. Um, and I have seen them go for as cheap as like three pounds. Really, really cheap. I've seen adults go, or adult females, I think, go for about 30, 35 pounds. Again, dwarf tarantulas, little tarantulas tend to be cheaper in most cases, not all. Um, she's also an African species. She's, she's an old world African tarantula. And there's a bunch of Africans that actually are pretty cheap. They tend to come in quite cheaper. Not all, but a lot of them do. So yeah, nine out of 10 for cost on this little golden beauty. So that just leaves uh, behavioral characteristics. Uh, and we are gonna go for another nine out of 10. So this is this is the biggest scoring tarantula I think we've had on this channel. So let's give it up for the H. Villacella, way. Um, and that's for many reasons. One, the web curtain and web tunnels. So she leaves a nice layer of web on her decor, but she also makes tunnels. Um, how she changed over time from being more like fossorial style to then being terrestrial and now that she's fully grown and actually sitting on the top a little bit more i cannot wait to get her in her new home i wanted to do that before this video but as i said there were delays um the feeding response is great from her that behavior with feeding is fantastic um uh, she the fact that she will be out in the open most of the time and then in they're very kind of um yeah, this is this is this was the thing I wanted to bring you up about behavioural characteristics. When I pick up her pot, it's the most of the time she comes out in the open. And when she's left to it is when she's hiding. She's the complete opposite. You are an opposite girl. She's the opposite of tarantula. Most tarantulas you pick it up, they're gone, right? Arboreals in the cork bark or behind or however you've got it set up. Terrestrials, into the hide. Fossorials, never bloody see them anyway. This one, quite often, appears out of nowhere and she'll either sit on the side or she'll sit on the top. But the bit she'll sit in is where it's clear. So, it's hard to, to show you guys, right? You see there's certain spots that have less webbing. They're the spots that she'll appear to. She'll either sit on the top of the web here but most of the time, 
So right now she's in that corner, but most of the time she'll sit around one of the spaces with less webbing on when you pick it up, which is a weird behavior because it's, it's the opposite of afraid. It's a confident behavior, but for such a tiny little spider, you know, that's some serious kind of like, come on then, or is it curiosity? Or what is it? Why is it that this is probably the only tarantula I own that has that behavior? Also, I've heard of a couple of people, especially one specifically, that's managed to keep these communally, and this is a species I would like to try a communal for. We have a Balfouri communal. I'm not interested in a pokey communal. Uh, I don't want to try an NC communal because I don't like the idea of that. I don't think they work. I'm not interested in H. Gigas communal. H. Filicella communal, that's going to be for me. And uh, we will set that project up at some point. I'll let you know how it goes. As soon as I start feeling that it doesn't work uh, is when I move them out and they'll have a lot more space than I was giving this one growing up. She's She doesn't come at me, she's never ever threat posed me, ever. Um, she's just a curious little wonder. But we'll see how that behavioural characteristic changes in her new enclosure when I get it set up for you guys. Just gotta wait for my parcel to arrive. Oh, couriers, eh? pain in the bum so you're going over there for a minute missus while i wrap this video up thank you very much for watching guys i hope you're enjoying this series and i will see you in the next one one last round of applause folks for our h villacella the highest scoring tarantula so far here on bug realms and i bet it's one that a lot of you have never kept or some of you maybe even heard of because they don't feature a lot on youtube take care everyone bye bye do you guys want to see what else dwells in the realm? If so, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. My usual upload days are Wednesdays and Sundays, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to become a disciple of the realm and have your name shown on the screen like these lovely people, you can do so in one of two ways. You can scroll down the screen now and hit that join button next to the subscribe to be a channel member. Or alternatively, you can follow my link in the description below to my Patreon page. Both methods grant you access to my private Facebook page, where we like to discuss even more things creepy-crawly. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.